I'm going to tell her that um, one of the things that that needs to be noted is 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 it's kind of like the death of story. That's that's one of the big problems. I don't I don't have a prescription because the prescription would be give them a new story, but. It's like a post-story age. You're usually doing the report handoffs. Has she said anything about them in the meantime? Or are we just still on her mission and she's going to give us a full report at the end? Or well, it's, it's tricky because what I get is like um, noted, email received. You know, there's no like, yes, this is good. No, this sucks. It's neutral. Neutral with a tone of passive aggression. It sort of keeps me in a loop of trying to get a response from it. And I know that that's happening. I'm like, oh, maybe. Uh, and I'm trying to then defiantly fight it rebelliously by sending through shitty reports, but it's not working. So are we doing a good job at the moment or are we just two idiots just talking about humans from a distance? I would say the second option is probably what's happening. She's moment. probably just loving the fact that we're trying so hard. We're right like now. worms wiggling on a hook right now. She but, knows that we want to go back. But isn't that what the humans are going through too? They're kind of going, flowing through this trying ambiguity. They don't know what they're fighting for now. The story is delisted, dissolving, like you're saying. Yeah, it's, it's 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 one of the many stresses. There's so many stresses at the moment. But even if you talk about like an orthodoxy, well, if you had an orthodoxy like uh, Catholicism or an orthodoxy like communism, there'd be a set of rules that you could satiate. You could mm. satiate the beast. Do this, this, and this. Denounce these people, these people, and these people. You'll be okay, at least for this week. Uh, but this is an ill-defined orthodoxy uh, where the rules change daily, almost. You know, you you don't know where the minds are in the minefield. It's it's extremely stressful. When I worked as a human selling jeans, mm. it wasn't doing the same routine every day that eventually got to me. It mm. was when the new boss would continuing, continuously change the rules mm. all the time. Mm-hmm. And so I'd be like, oh, I'm doing it right. I'm folding the jeans. Oh, but not like that now. Now the jeans are going here and here and here. You're not sweeping right this time. You're yeah. do but I just did that yesterday. No, it's not. And I felt like there was more human anxiety that came from the ambiguity and the switching of rules, the confusion of like, am I doing doing this job right or yeah. am I not? Where yes. if at least was like, get five jeans, mm. sell three, you're good. Mm-hmm. I probably would have lasted at that lo- job a bit longer. Yeah, there, there's a, a guy um, called Gregory Bateson. Uh, he came up with a really interesting uh, hypothesis or model for psychology. He wasn't a psychologist, he was an anthropologist. But we have something called Gregory Bateson's double bind theory of schizophrenia, which was his double bind theory was that you could drive somebody insane by constantly changing the rules. So if you keep putting people in double binds where you say, do this and everything will be okay, and then as you do the thing that makes everything okay, you're actually transgressing another law that says, no, if you do that, you won't be okay. It's really, really stressful and the psyche starts to break down. So if I give you a job to do and I'm like, okay, sweep this warehouse clean and you'll be okay, I'll let you go home at five. There's no brushes. Is that why my relationship isn't working out? <laughs> Who's putting you in a double bind? Uh, nobody. I just feel like I might be able to relate to the situation. Okay, you're not saying that your girlfriend is putting you through a series. Oh, of no, 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 no. She would. She wouldn't. She, she wouldn't do, do that. She's an angel. She no, would never she, do that. I just. I just feel like. I mean, a part of me might have experienced something like that mm-hmm. in the but past. Not now. Not now. Not now. No, not now. like in the not past in this situation. But it resonates. Yeah, like. The thing is, I think a lot of people are, especially the ones that are locked together, that they don't even really like each other in the first place. Right. Maybe full families. Yeah. You know, people being stuck in their homes are being put in this double bind. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like some, what do you call them, gov- 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 governments, 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 mm-hmm. they're telling the people the same thing. The rules mm-hmm. are changing every single day. Mm-hmm. Out here, I think in Prague, the Czech Republic, the government's putting out these like yellow notices with the warning label. Mm-hmm. Every every hour, it's a different rule. Yes. Um this form of psychological abuse, not that the Czech government is psychologically abusing its people, of course, uh, is called uh, intermittent reinforcement. So uh, you think that you're escaping, you think you've done everything you need to do, and then the rules change, and then they change again, and then they change again. So you adapt. So you go, oh, okay, we'll do it this way. No, that's not good enough. Oh, okay, what do you want? We want this. Okay, we'll do it this way then. No, that's not good enough either. It breaks people. It's exhausting to live like that because you're not sticking to one set of rules. And I don't even know if anybody 
or group of humans is doing it so much as the story is just breaking down and disintegrating. So every time you pick a piece up and go, this is how we're going to do it, when you hold it in your hands, it goes, and just entropies right there. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely not just the Czech government. Every single government around the world seems mm. to be switching their rules all the time because mm. the actual fabric of human reality is switching all the time. Mm -hmm. The story, like you're saying, that the humans follow is mm -hmm. written in a different language now. The mm -hmm. pages are no longer paper. Mm -hmm. They're read on Kindle. Mm -hmm. They're editing everything in real time. They're mm -hmm. removing pages, putting new pages mm -hmm. in. It's no longer a book. Now it's like a video podcast. Mm. It's like every single element, regardless of government, regardless of regulations, all of these things are just being obliterated right now. Mm -hmm. My manifestation in the flesh suit was that of a, a, a British male. And in the case of the British government, what's become apparent is that they're very tuned into social media, which means that they're very aware of how popular their decisions are far too aware and far too caring. They care what the popular opinion is of, of their decisions, which of course means they have to change them all the time. So as public opinion moves over there, they change the policy. And when public opinion moves over here, they change the policy. It's reactive, not proactive, and it's enormously cowardly and not courageous. Hmm. Hmm. Because even, even on a social level, of what's acceptable and unacceptable changes every single day mm -hmm. as well. It's not even just official government mandates. The story that even you grow up, you go to college, get to be a doctor, open up legs for a living, make sure you see the green slime, get rid of the green slime, and then you, you, you live the rest of your life happily married in a happy divorce. <laughs> that narrative is gone. Yes, and, and, and a career, a job for life has, has gone. Everybody's being forced into the what do they call it the short the short job economy the gig economy it's crazy every human is delivering food while driving a car transporting other individuals to a different place with nowhere to go meanwhile having a side hustle of doing video podcasts talking about things that no one else knows about while this person doesn't know about this opinion i i had the experience of helping uh, a brain surgeon who was renowned in his nation as one of the best brain surgeons trying to adapt to a gig economy for brain surgery. So he would have to, Smart. as an entrepreneur, pimp himself out to hospitals around the world in order to work as a brain surgeon who's at the top of his game. And he was saying to me, or through a, a, a family member who spoke English, my English isn't that good. Can you please write emails for me to help me approach hospitals so I can work as a brain surgeon? Oh, door to door brain surgeon. But pretty much. <laughs> it's like, hey guys, yeah. look what I can do. Medulla oblongata. And he was asking me, like a former, you know, a, a nightclub bouncer, to help him get work in hospitals around the world as a brain surgeon. Can you imagine that? The amount of training, the amount of sacrifice you go through to get to that. And he's not a sucky brain surgeon. He's like one of the best in the country that I won't name where he's from. Mm. And he still doesn't have the work to pay his bills. <laughs> I mean, if wor worse goes to worse, you, you can start a thing on OnlyFans, like Only Brains. Only Brains. And then you just like show the pornography of opening up people's yeah, I mean, craniums. Here's the thing. If everybody is on OnlyFans now, I know everybody, actual everyone and their mom, as the human saying goes, but right. actually them and their mom <laughs> are on OnlyFans <laughs> showing fleshy parts of themselves. Why shouldn't the brain surgeon be? But here's the thing. There's going to be a part, point of human saturation where everybody's booty and their mamas are showing on camera so then people want more right so then the fleshy parts of their upper thighs are no longer going to be interesting anymore so right. then they're like oh we need to go beneath the surface so then yeah. the brain surgeon yes mm. that's what i need to see now yeah exactly be next level so he could be ahead of the game on this one so then there you go the dissolution of story to the point where everybody just now either has to be a door-to-door -door brain surgeon or construction worker or mm -hmm. whatever traditionally stable job mm -hmm. or they show fleshy parts of themselves on an internet website or you combine the two mm -hmm. so this story has no beginning mm -hmm. no middle part no climax mm -hmm. no resolution mm -hmm. everybody's just floating on <laughs> yeah. here's my wiener here's my wiener mm -hmm. that's the story here's my here's my wiener by everyone mm -hmm. here's my wiener by the citizens of earth uh, it, Humans need story. They really, really, really do need story. Sometimes we get too locked 
uh, when we're in the flesh suit, we get too locked into story, and that's a problem. But if you have no story at all, what are you, how are you supposed to live? You have no identity and no story. How infuriating from a human perspective, you watch a movie mm -hmm. and it's terribly written. There's nothing you can follow. Mm -hmm. The script is like, hey, I'm mad. Why are you mad? I don't know, I am. You would be infuriated. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, this is the worst movie. I mean, there's like this weird intrinsic fury that comes from watching a terrible piece of work, like mm -hmm. movie. Mm -hmm. But now the story in the movie of our lives is becoming a terribly written plot. Yeah. Yeah, we're all we're all living some sort of version of The Room. Did you see that movie, The Room? Uh, unfortunately, it's like one of the worst films ever made. It's, oh yeah, yeah. I did not hit her. I did not do it. I did not hit her. I did not. I did not. I did not. But then that became even a thing that people appreciated because there was at least something charming about it. Yeah, it was. The sincerity was there, and it's actually hard. Uh, as uh, for a human being to be so inhuman that was the wonderful thing was watching this human do a terrible impression of being a human which actually in return becomes even more human right <laughs> it showcases how bumbling we are yeah <laughs> so then what is the result of watching the movie of our lives just disintegrate into a terribly written thing that doesn't even have a bit of charm anymore well i think that that's the 2020 year is about that split where we say, okay, there's, if nothing is anything, then everything is nothing. That seems to be the message of 2020. If everything is nothing, then nothing is everything. It's a, a total apocalypse of nihilism where nothing may be anything, which is, you know, when certain people rail against postmodernism and uh, what postmodernism brings to the world. If you challenge everything, but relentlessly and tear it to shreds and say that nothing is anything, you end up with existential nihilism of the most malignant kind. So this is coming from a culture that has bred. You are the very special, mm -hmm. unique main character mm -hmm. of this award winning novel that you are the main star of. Mm -hmm. And then. Next page. Just kidding. <laughs> this is actually a load of crap. They're going to they're gonna lose their minds. They are losing their minds because they are all living the experience of being a very special protagonist in a story that is ultimately signifying nothing. So then what's going to happen? What are they going to do? I don't know. We need to come up with some sort of prescriptive solution. Let's think of one in the next 15 seconds. Oh. Uh... So they're not going to be able to think straight. They can't function on their own. They can't function with others because that whole novel that they thought they were a main character of, turns out none of the cameras were even on in the first place. Right. Uh, okay. And it's all Costa de Blamange. Do they just temporarily stick with the fake storyline in the meantime to move along? Or do they just accept the fact that they're not a part of the movie? Well, I don't have a prescription description as much as a prediction of what could happen in the multiple timelines which is you could see a resurgence of cults highly orthodox cults oh shit that thing yeah they're yeah. gonna do that better to have some crazy story than no story at all you right? started putting on the robe and the beads right oh wow yes i like that i like it thesis antithesis Synthesis. So, the, are you him? Do we write to Corona that the solution are a bunch of cults? Not that it's a solution because it would be a maladaptive solution. I mean, and it would regress people unless they knowingly joined a cult that oh, therefore would fuck. make it not a cult. That's not a good That's not a good solution, not man. Good. We can't that's have a bunch good. of cults just popping no, up, no, man. No, no, you know no. what happens in the cults with this cult? Yeah, and the yeah. cults become like the, the culty cult? And the then, culty cult. And then, they, you know? And then there's a, yeah, for sure. Fuck. Oh, shit. As a super genius I am, yeah. I'm actually stumped now. I don't really know why she forced two sanitation workers to try and come up with these solutions. Neither of us are qualified for it. You know how they look at humans up here? They're like, oh, scrub the floors. <laughs> you fucking dummies. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send these two idiots to figure it out. Well, um, maybe then it's time to try to fully mature past story 
but not in an infantile way in which you're in denial and you pretend the story is still there and that you're still living it. But you say, hey, there's no more story. We can embrace that, but we can exist. We can just exist free from story. Become the writer, not the consumer of the text, perhaps? Might be a gentle solution. Step away from being the member in the theater. Yeah. Maybe learn to work a camera or yeah. learn to write a script. Yeah. Be an author rather than a reader. That's a lot of adulting to do in one lifetime, though, for people who've been totally infantilized into an infinite adolescence. Hmm. I guess it's a good start because that way the story gets to exist still. Mm -hmm. There's something to work towards, mm -hmm. maybe a bit of discipline, a bit of rules here and there, mm -hmm. and you get to create a beautiful work of art that you made yourself. And yes. that could work, yeah? Yes, with an enormous amount of courage, you could probably come up with authoring your own story rather than insisting on imbibing the stories of others. Maybe. Karani will like this one. At this point, I'll try anything. I'll write it up. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah.